live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live day two wrap up of IBM Insight. This is theCUBE, our flagship program where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante, and this is the end of our two day wall to wall coverage here at IBM Insight in the special digital experience lounge called Insight Go, which is a special new uh, feature with IBM with their events where they have a digital lounge, a social lounge, trying to create a digital experience uh, for their audience who aren't on site. And it really is a great, uh, great start. You're seeing influencers here, people are sharing their content, really trying to create an immersive experience around the digital. Of course, special presentation by theCUBE, we're bringing that, the videos at rapid fire all day long, and it's super exciting, because we get to talk to everybody that's uh, here, executives, entrepreneurs, investors, thought leaders, people in the trenches, product managers, and folks in charge within IBM and also other companies. So Dave, really an amazing show, and I think uh, a couple observations, one, um, you know, looking back at last year's coverage, a lot of the same themes. I mean, we pretty much hit the, hit the marks from last year in terms of checking the boxes. Same stuff, but much more of a morphing effect. You're starting to see the cloud piece accelerate the speed of the change. You're starting to see the IBM executives really upbeat. And one thing that I was looking for was, what were the executives going to be like when they came inside the queue? Looking in their eyes, getting a feel for their sentiment, their orientation, what were they thinking about? Looking, looking through their, their soul and finding out, is IBM still have that mojo back? They got a huge, huge uh, bloody bludgeoning at the earnings miss, and that was really you know, a public and quite amplified failure uh, in the marketplace. And I think, you know, I was trying to get a sense of what was that all about? Was it uh, just a complete overblown by the press? Well, certainly Wall Street, we trashed them earlier about kind of not getting it. But I wanted to see what the executives thought, Dave. Did they have the spring in their step? And, and to me, my walk away is this. They're, they're not budging. You know, just like the Twitter's, Twitter earnings we commented on earlier, those executives are in for the long play. Steve Mills, was dynamic, energized, he was not mailing it in. And even when I asked him the closing question, which we were supposed to wrap up the segment, he, he went on for a good five to 10 minutes on, on, the, on Watson. He was essentially engaged at a level, I just at a senior, senior level, is pretty impressive. So, I mean, I think, I mean, I'm just not seeing any cracks in the foundation from the executive team and the people in the IBM uh, ecosystem. Well, I mean, I think the, the, the miss was a big deal. I mean, I think it, it shook IBM a little bit. Um, you know, IBM CEO, Jenny Rometty, had to come out and say, look, we're going to backpedal on guidance. I, I, and we talked about this with Ray Wang. She, I think, was handed a, a, a tough deck. The deck that she was dealt was, was not one that she crafted, right? It was the previous administration, and she can, and she's not blaming them. You know, she said, okay, I'm going to try to execute on this strategy. I think maybe we can pull a rabbit out of the hat, but I think she made the right move saying, all right, we got to pull back. And we got to put the, uh, the wood behind cloud, big data, engagement, mobile first. And, and those businesses are big, like Mill said, they're multi-billion dollar businesses. Problem is when you got a hundred billion dollar company, a bunch of multi-billion dollar businesses can't offset the declines in the highly profitable traditional growth areas. And well, I mean, IBM did get some negative press. I was just on the phone today with a venture capitalist in Silicon Valley, and you know, I mentioned I was here at the event, and I, oh, I hope IBM, like, even the sentiment is embedded, so th that whole rhetoric really was bad for IBM, and I think it really is a bummer for them because th it really was mis misjudged, and certainly Wall Street amplified that with the earnings miss, but I got to tell you, the IBM is not the culture that I see that does a lot of, uh, you know, cloud washing or snake oil like pitches. Certainly they're marketing, they got, they got a marketing DNA, don't get me wrong, but good marketing is just, you know, putting the sizzle to the steak, as we always say. And that's, IBM's never been a head fake kind of company. So I think, if you look at their vision, go back three years and look at what uh, the executives were, were talking about and what they're doing today. It's basically the same thing. It's cloud, mobile, and social. Steve Mills call it CAMS. You know, cloud, analytics, mobile, security, and social. 
really has not deviated off their core vision. Now they've reorganized their resources. I was talking to the product management guy with Watson Analytics, and you know, he was saying, even though it's in beta, they have really baked technologies in Watson. So I, I think IBM's going to take it in the shorts a little bit on the PR. They might lose some margin with the transition to cloud, but I think on the other side of that, uh, that chasm, if you will, will be massive ramp of leverage. And I think that's going to be the big bet. That's the bet that I see IBM making. Well, I mean, IBM came out of the downturn and roared. Uh, and yeah, some of that was financial engineering, a lot of stock buybacks, but the company performed, was generating a lot of cash, stock was, was, was beha had behaved very nicely coming out of that. And then it started to go sideways, and you could sort of see, all right, you know, maybe, maybe if, there's a, if there's something bad that comes out, it's going to get crushed. And that's exactly what happened. Personally, I think that's a good thing, because I think the expectations were too high, especially for a company in transition. Wall Street doesn't like companies in transition, and I think in many respects, it was ignoring the impending transition. Um, Oracle's going through it now. HP you know, has you know, clearly gone through it. I think EMC is another one that, that's going through it. SAP is going through it. So, so the test of these executives is how well they navigate through these transitions, and Ginny is, it's up. Now she's, yeah. gonna, now she's gonna own this strategy. It's the three envelopes, yeah. right? Well, she, she has to deliver on this one. And, and she, she didn't blame her predecessors. No, but, no, I think but, she was, this but, was clearly like, okay, I inherited this, I'm gonna do a reset on all expectations, let's set the table. And she didn't say that, she didn't say, oh, no, but, I, I, but, but, I mean, but that on. is what she's doing. She, she did doing. inherit a, a deck of cards that she inherited was a, a plan that, I mean, she contributed to that plan in fairness. I mean, she was running strategy before she took she over. She needed so. that grenade to blow up, and she, and that, that's what will happen, and she finally now can say, enough's enough, we're going to go with my plan, and I think that plan is solid. If you look at their strategy, it makes sense. But the struggles aren't over, so the key now is for IBM to stick to its, its, its plan. It's got the right playbook, I think. Yeah. It's oh just, yeah. it's got to have the patience to, to go forward with this strategy, and of course it announced today it's adding $5 billion to its buyback program, which is going to help, I have no right? problem with the buyback. No, I think I, that's I mean, well overblown. People, buying, people criticize that. I mean, back the that's stock. the game plan today. Yeah, this You've got to do that. This is not a negative. But well, New York Times really got that story wrong. Andrew Sorkin completely wet on that, completely in the dark. Well, they sort if of If you're are, watching this, you know, they, I've had they, a debate with you if well, you want. Well, but don't they want to, people want to argue, oh, they're putting money into buybacks instead of R&D. Right, my IBM spends money on R&D. You can't criticize IBM it was for not cheap, spending money on It was a cheap shot at IBM, and you know it's what? It's just poor analysis. It's poor. Let's go to his Sorry, house no, no. right now and that's, beat him up. That's poor analysis, okay? <laughs> IBM spent, it's not like they're saying, okay, we're going to rob What's the difference between that and dividends? I mean, so what? So yeah, increase you your dividends. You want to control wanna the float, goodbye, and this is, this yeah. is the financial, it's just financial move, just like hedge, hedging for R&D purposes. So if you want to watch analysis, go to day one, day one <laughs> uh, with Ray <laughs> Wang, myself and Dave, we get a big oh, drill down, oh. good 15 minute segment on the, on the IBM analysis. Dave, let's move into- oh, I, want, I want to add one thing if oh, I okay, can. So this, this notion that we were talking about, but this digital matrix where you've got infrastructure as a service and you've got, you've got security, you've got applications of engagement and you've got data as horizontal transports. I mean, I think IBM's actually putting those things together. And the other wild card is Watson here. I think Watson, is, as Mill said, has tremendous potential. So to the extent that IBM can craft its messaging and a go-to-market story around those, it's not there yet. I think there's still some confusion around Blue Mix. I think there's some, some traction or lack of traction with the developer community that IBM really has to hit. They're trying hard, but that's where I want to see progress. The true test for Blue Mix is do, do they pull Amazon people over? because Amazon has success with their integrated stack and we're going to go to be at reInvent next month and Blue Mix has some work to do and they know that. So I, I don't know, John. I don't know if they have to pull Amazon people over. Do you really think that? I mean, I think there's a big well, unwashed opportunity to just take the enterprise and bring them, to keep them from going okay, to Amazon. Yeah, maybe you, know, you see what I'm saying? Keep yeah, them yeah. from going so to this Amazon. So is, this is the issue. Developers are key right now for Blue Mix. It's not so much of winning and competitive displacement with Amazon. A lot of those guys are going to go bare metal anyway as they grow and there's going to be a role for that public cloud. But the problem is developers love Amazon. On. Yeah. No one says I'm going to go to Blue Mix. That's just not happening. I mean, no one's and they're they're you know get trying well, to onboard. To your point, it's got to happen. No, well they're right. um, they're working hard to onboard developers, but that's just not happening. Fast but Watson enough. is their key to that, right? Yes, if you take the I've, Watson uh, de uh, analytics platform as a development platform, that's unique to developers. I would I've go never hard seen you after that the strategy. Table like that. No, you know what I'm saying though. Yeah, you really. No, I mean, if I'm a DevOps, uh, if they want to target the DevOps, they should go hard with I Watson agree. at those developers. I, that's something that. Nobody else can do. No, no, I think that's a great And that's strategy. the tip of the spear. I think you are 100% accurate on that. The, the candy to lure them into the Blue Mix world is to have one, a good Blue Mix platform. That means everything's going to be baked out. And then two, you got to sweeten the pot a little bit. 
you got to sweeten an offer with Watson. Yeah. I mean, I think Watson's a nuclear weapon that they haven't brought out. When they drop that A-bomb out there, you're going to see some devastation. I think developers, that's the ecosystem yeah. that yeah. they have to build. And that, 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 that's, nobody's got that, nobody. Let's summarize the show now, Dave. Let's talk about what we liked on these interviews past couple of days. We had some great conversations. Um, to me, I think the big takeaway was, um, I love the context computing. I love that notion of the geospatial with Jeff Jonas. I think that this notion of false positive engines is really a lot of the big data stuff is spitting out a lot of bad analysis. And I think having better use of resources to do better decision making and better predictions on with finite resources is, is an awesome thing. I think Jeff Jonas has certainly got an amazing opportunity there. I think this inflection point versus shift was a great point by um, Bob Picciano the, uh, yesterday. That was a really genius point to highlight that. And that was one of the, my highlights of the show. Um, the data changes, data comment, speed. This is a speed game at this point. And I think that you know, Ray Wang pointing out the future of IBM is key. Steve Mills, in the cloud, on-premise hybrid in between. We hear that every show. Um, again, uh, my, my big takeaway from this show is three major customer investment areas, okay? Con consumer customer experience, one. Two, operational asset leverage and optimization efficiency. That's the supply chain, process improvement, stuff they already have systems of records on, all that other good stuff. And three, risk and security and governance. Those three things are absolutely the most critical issues on the table today, where dollars are behind it with, with real specific business outcomes tied to it. I think you, you can't play in those three areas, Dave, with snake oil. You need to be there with real product, real outcomes. Uh, and the rest, the fun stuff is, you know, Streaming with context computing, the cognitive computing. Love this vision. This vision of, of that is really highlights. And you know, we heard two smart people validate our crowd chat opportunity. And that is about the cognitive piece. That is the context engine. Uh, and it's just really a super exciting show around data. It's awesome. I'd add a couple things. So uh, Kirk Bourne from George Mason University, the Lord of the Things. Right, we got a lot of talking. The to twin powers. Internet of Things. <laughs> right, the twin. Right. Um, I agree. Picciano was great. Mills had the quote of the week off camera. You had told him that Ray Wang said that he and Larry Ellison were two of the chess masters in the software business, and Mills said, if I had Larry's cash, I'd burn mine, which I thought was the, the quote of the week. And uh, we had Katie Lindenhall on, who was really an interesting TV personality. We have, we've had a number of TV personalities on, right? We have, we've had uh, 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 Richard Schlesinger has been on. He tweeted um, me the other day after the 48 hours segment he did that was kick ass. Um, we had, we've had uh, Nate Silver, now with ESPN. We've had, um, um, who else we've had on? From, <laughs> from Infor. <laughs> Reggie Jackson's been on. Reggie Jackson he, 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 came Reggie on. Jackson's been on. <laughs> uh, we've had David Pogue. Pogue's been on. Who else? Infor. Uh, uh, I not Entertainment there. Tonight. I wasn't there, <laughs> you were there. I forget. Um, anyway, we had a lot of personalities. <laughs> But great guest Help overall. Me. <laughs> no, maybe it wasn't entertainment tonight. I don't know. And he Chosa was here. Andy Lindell, she's personality. Right. She's now Cube Star. Um, and you know, having Brian Fonzo on, having you know this new influencer thing. Deborah Norville. <laughs> Deborah Norville. <laughs> Dave, you're getting old, man. You gotta, Sorry. You gotta, you gotta, it's been a long two days. Get some solid state <laughs> memory in your head there. A little flash. That's right, Adam Silver, Nate Silver. So. It was good to have Katie on to, to join those folks. Well, um, great, great event. Uh, Derek Shuttle from Cloudant. I really liked his story. Yeah, I mean, awesome you know. stuff. We had We're interested to see if, how long he stays at IBM. You know, IBM people, when they do acquisitions, they stay around. EMC's got that same thing. Maybe the top guys leave, but uh, they vest and they bail normally on these startups. All right, John. All right, good guys. working well, with you again. Guys, thanks for the team here. Uh, Greg, Andrew, Patrick, the whole team here, and all the folks out and back on the ranch, Silicon Angle blogging at Wikibon, doing all the analysis, and of course, for the crowd chat team, uh, Danny, Drew, and everyone else uh, working on the crowd chat. We appreciate it. Uh, that's Insight a wrap Go, here, guys. Uh, at uh, at uh, IBM. Insight Go, great new digital experience, awesome opportunity uh, to bring more great content to you, and we're proud to be a part of it. This is theCUBE signing off from Las Vegas, live at IBM Insight. Good night, see you at the next show. <laughs>